<laughs> Taking all the water out of the toilet. Oh my gosh, we are being so inappropriate. Hey, welcome to our scene on SIADH, Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone Secretion. In this video, we're going to talk about how SIADH happens, we're going to talk about the symptoms involved, and then we're going to end off with a word on treatment. So let's begin with how SIADH happens, and we're going to begin with a discussion of what ADH is. So ADH is a hormone which acts on the distal nephron, specifically the collecting tube and the distal convoluted tubule. Now, further two-thirds part, and it tells them to upregulate the aquaporins, which is responsible for free water retention. So basically, if your body is low in fluid, then ADH tells the nephron, retain more free water. In SIADH, there is too much ADH. ADH is doing more than it's supposed to. It's working when it's not supposed to work. When the body doesn't need more fluid, it's telling the body to retain more free water. And this is of course going to lead to a low osmolality in the serum. Let's take a look at this guy over here. This ADH guy is retaining water from the toilet. Now, of course, the body doesn't retain water from the toilet. It does it from the nephron. But this guy over here is going to help us remember the concept that in SIADH, water is retained. Free water is retained. And he's dumping it into the bucket over here. And he's saying, this is so inappropriate. It's so inappropriate. It's inappropriate because it's acting when it's not supposed to. That's what SIADH is. Before we talk about the symptoms, let's talk a little bit more about the pathophysiology. So when ADH levels are high, and there's going to be more fluid retention, volume is going to go up. And thus, aldosterone is going to go down. Secretion is going to go down. Represented by the aldostone over here. Aldo is on this stone over here. Aldostone for aldosterone is going down. Now what happens when aldosterone goes down is that less sodium is retained in the nephron and sodium ends up in the collecting duct into the urine. And that's why over here below the toilet, all these salt shakers representing sodium is going down. And of course, water likes to follow sodium. That's why we find this fluid over here going down into the toilet. Now this is really not good because as we mentioned, due to the free water retention, the serum osmolality is already gonna be low. And now more sodium is being lost. This leads to a really low serum osmolality. And this really low serum osmolality is what leads to the symptoms seen in SIADH. So symptoms such as headache, nausea, and vomiting are common. But we're going to talk about the high yield ones that we want to be aware of. Take a look at this brain over here. This brain with the fluid coming out of its head. This brain with fluid in its head is going to help us remember the cerebral edema. Just to explain what happens, as the sodium concentration continues to get lower in the blood, the neurons in the brain begin to swell, leading to cerebral edema. And this, of course, could lead to seizures, represented by this Caesar crown over here. Caesar crown for seizures. And it could also lead to hallucinations. And it could even lead to death, represented by the explosion that we see. Before we move on to causes of SIADH, let's take a look at these beds over here. These beds are high up on the second floor because they represent a lab value that is increased. Let's take a look. Here we see the napping A and the napping B. Napping A for napping B, or the A napping and B napping for A and P and B and P. And they are on the second floor because they're increased. In SIADH, A and P and B and P levels will be increased. These hormones are activated in response to atrial and ventricular volume pressure expansion. So due to the increase in volume due to the SIADH, these levels will be increased. And that's why they're on the second floor. Okay, we're gonna take a look at this poster in one moment. This poster is gonna represent treatment. But before we get to it, there's actually someone here who wanted to come into this house, but they're not letting him in because he looks a little bit scary. Who's this guy? I don't know. But he's gonna help us remember the causes of SIADH. Well, there could be a lot of causes of SIADH. Basically anything that affects the release of ADH. He has this knife going through his brain to help us remember the head trauma, as well as the CNS disorders, which can lead to SIADH. His face is made of oats. You see his eyes, oats, and his mouth is oats. To help us remember oat cell carcinoma, also known as small cell carcinoma. Small cell car carcinoma can cause SIADH due to the ectopic ADH. Here we have his lungs over here that are exploding to help us remember the pulmonary disease that can lead to SIADH. And his legs are medicine bottles or drugs. Drugs can lead to SIADH, including SSRIs, carmazepine, and cyclophosphamide. Actually, this car that's bombed over here is to help us remember carbamazepine, 
and this fossil over here on the floor with the cycle. The fossil with the cycle is going to help us remember cyclophosphamide. Okay, let's end off with treatment. Look at this sign over here. F said. This F over here said something. I don't know what it was. It sounds kind of random, but it's going to help us remember the treatment for SIADH. F for fluid restriction. That's first line treatment. S is going to be for salt tablets. A is going to be for ADH antagonists, such as canavaptan, tolvaptan, and demeclocycline. I is going to be for IV hypertonic saline, and D is going to be for diuretics. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this incredibly weird scene on SIADH. Stay tuned for our next video. Please subscribe to the channel, leave your comments, and take care.